Hey everyone, Bradley Stalder here with some weak winning stats that are guaranteed to get you victory in your first matchup of your fantasy leagues. Let's get to it. That's right. I want to set the stage. We've just come out of the summer. The summer ruled by Taylor Swift, right? <laughs> she sizzled with success. The Eras Tour was a phenomenal success. There was a blockbuster ticket presale bonanza even for this concert. It was wild. And we saw videos. Like if you look at some of the videos of the stadiums in, in Seattle or in Cincinnati, the stadiums were literally shaking because all of the fans were cheering her along. It was wild. It was crazy. It was a Taylor Swift summer. And just like Taylor Swift, you too can claim victory, not on the stage, but in your fantasy football league. Harness the power of these weak winning stats, conquer your matchups, master the art of start, sit decisions, and leave your league mates in awe of your strategic prowess. That's right, you will be the true mastermind. Well, let's get into these stats, all right? The first is that there's a prime matchup. DK Metcalf versus Akella Witherspoon. And you're thinking to yourself, who's Akella Witherspoon? Well, here's what you need to know. The first stat is Akella Witherspoon allowed 18 fantasy points per game last year. And facing DK Metcalf, this is an absolutely smash matchup wide receiver cornerback. And look, Witherspoon was just lit up. He allowed four touchdowns and 22 receptions in just four games last year. So a touchdown a game. And Metcalf has torched him in the past. One of his most recent games, Metcalf went six for 81 and a touchdown. That's over 20 fantasy points. Recent and distant history say this is a matchup that we want to target. We want to start DK Metcalf with confidence. If you drafted him round three, you should be very happy. He's got a strong matchup week one against the LA Rams, who overall have one of the worst uh, worst defenses in the NFL. So you want to be targeting DK Metcalf in uh, as a as a strong start this week. The second big time stat that I want you to take away from today is Christian Watson. He averaged twenty point seven fantasy points per game. In games where he played 70 or more percent of the snaps, Watson is poised for a showdown with the Chicago Bears, in particular the defensive backs, Kyler Gordon and Jalen Johnson, a matchup that clearly favors Watson, right? Well, Johnson ranked 61st in PFF coverage grade. Kyler Gordon ranked 128th, and that's out of 135. So you've got like an average defensive back and one of the worst defensive backs in the NFL facing off against Watson. And the last time that Watson played against the Bears, he chalked up 131 air yards, scored 24.4 fantasy points. And with Green Bay's solid offensive line, we should have confidence that Jordan Love has enough time for Christian Watson to get down the field and score and make big plays. Watson is set to explode against the Bears in week one. The third stat that we need to get out there, right? We got the Thursday night game, the Detroit Lions versus Kansas City Chiefs. And the Lions, this is the stat, the Lions scored 23 rushing touchdowns as a team last year. And they'll have room to work in week one. Chris Jones is not expected to play. Jones was the number one PFF graded defensive interior lineman. And instead, the Chiefs are going to play the 99th and 143rd ranked defensive lineman. That's, that's right. David Montgomery is going to have room to work. Jameer Gibbs is going to have room to work even between the tackles. So in goal line situations, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs have touchdown upside Taking a macro view, this is going to be a high-scoring game. So we want to be playing the David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. If you drafted both of them, you're starting both of them in what we think is going to be a high-scoring matchup. The fourth stat that 
will win you your week is that Ezekiel Elliott touched the ball 36 times in the two games that Tony Pollard finished respectively as the running back one overall and the running back two overall. Elliott's now in New England, and Tony Pollard has this backfield to himself. There's no free agent signing that was of any significance with Dallas this offseason. Tony Pollard clearly ahead of the other options, Rico Doddle, Deuce Fawn, and a distant fourth, Malik Davis. Don't forget, even with Zeke on the team last year, Pollard saw three or more targets in nine of his 16 games. Tony Pollard running back one pathway starts week one. You should not only start him with confidence, but expect a spike week, week one. Here's a fifth week winning stat, and it's actually a benching play. Gabriel Davis has averaged his, his average weekly finish was wide receiver 54 against the New York Jets secondary last year. Davis only caught five passes and gained 64 yards on nine targets during both contests. And he's likely to face either Sauce Gardner, who was the number one defensive back per PFF at coverage grade, or DJ Reed, who was 16th out of 135 qualified defensive backs. And so he's got, wherever he's going on the outside, it's going to be difficult for Gabriel Davis to make big plays. So in a game where we, once again, take a macro look at the game, Aaron Rodgers is going to slow the game down, which means fewer plays. And Gabriel Davis, who who is operating a lot on, on volume last year, will probably not get targeted very much in what we think is going to be a lower scoring game. So I think it's wise to temper expectations for Davis, who has a tough matchup wherever he goes. And this is going to be a lower scoring game than what we would anticipate from a Bills matchup. The final stat, and this is this, mm, this justifies my Calvin Ridley love this off season. Ridley has notched a stellar 15.4% rate of top five weeks over his last 17 games. And comparing that to the 2022 wide receivers, that would rank him seventh in rate of top five weeks, only behind Justin Jefferson, who's going as arguably the 101 overall, uh, Devontae Adams, who's going as a, a back end of the first round, early second round pick, Cooper Cup, who would be a mid-pack first round pick is if it's not for the injury, Tyreek Hill, mid-first round pick, Jamar Chase, 1.02, 1.03 in some drafts, and I'm on Ross St. Brown, a back around back end of the first round pick. So this is the type of cluster that Calvin Ridley's upside has matched in the past. And now he's poised to be the alpha on an ascending Jaguars offense led by Trevor Lawrence. And according to Dwayne McFarland, shout out Dwayne McFarland, according to his preseason utilization report that spans five drives. So it is a small sample size, but it does give us an indication of what the Jaguars want to do on offense. It's clear that Calvin Ridley is going to play all the time with the first team. He was not taken off the field. Christian Kirk was taken off the field. Calvin Ridley was not taken off with the first team. Not only did he run hundred percent of the routes, he commanded 31% target share, which is higher than either of the last two years, median target shares. And he owned a 39% air yard share, which is phenomenal among the league's best. If we were to extrapolate that out, we should expect Calvin Ridley, not only to deliver wide receiver one worthy numbers, but start right away, especially against a vulnerable Indianapolis defense. Well, I hope this is helpful for y'all. Good luck in your week one matchups. And until next time, good luck in the fancy streets, everyone.